I'm Pamela Portnoy. I'm Alexa Marie Anderson. And no one's okay. <laughs> Hello. We're back. Hey. <laughs> we have a very special guest with us today. Uh, we have the lovely Richard Rennie, uh, who's a dear friend of mine. Um, he is originally from Aberdeen, Scotland, um, and he is an actor, a writer, director, a dancer, you name it. A uh, very lovely human, and he just finished writing a screenplay and just wrapped a feature called Claw. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me having me on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We're happy to have you. Thanks. So I'm excited. Um, and congratulations on wrapping that film. Thank you, thank you. We just we just we just finished filming the Laugh Factory like ten days ago, so that's exciting that it's we we did kind of the final day of shooting and they're in the edit, so that's that's very yeah. exciting. If you don't mind me asking, how was filming during quarantine? It was okay. I mean, it was very different. Like, I feel like, unfortunately, um, sets probably aren't going to be like a very fun place to shoot for a while. You know, like that yeah. that sort of feeling of 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 the fun that you have with like the cast and crew that was that was kind of sort of put on hold for for a protocol that they had to follow. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, so it wasn't like the most fun fun day, but it was it was pretty good. And we actually shot most of the film in December. Okay. Um, Okay. So they just needed to do one pickup day, which we did at the Laugh Factory 10 days ago. So we just had one day of filming. So I think it would be very different if you were on like a three week shoot. But because it was just one day, it was like, oh, it's fine. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad you guys got a lot of it in before all the craziness happened. That's nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, Richard, tell us what your life was like in Europe. Like, how did you go from... Aberdeen, Scotland. I know you were in Paris for a bit and now in the US. And what was that process like for you? I'm just curious. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm very, very lucky to have lived in like a lot of different places around Europe. And I I, um, I moved away from um, from Scotland at a pretty young age and went to, to Paris. Um, and then I moved to London um, and I did some training in like a musical theater dance school there. It was kind of yeah. much more dance based. And then after graduating from that, um, I worked around London on different music videos, um, like a couple of musicals there and just worked on various shows there. Then I um, secured a contract in the Moulin Rouge in Paris, where I worked for six years in that company. So I moved back to Paris. And then that's when I decided four years ago to move to LA and I made the move from, and it was kind of also a bit of a move away from dance for me as well, because I'm, I'm 35 now. So at that age, I was 31, which is still young for a dancer, but yeah. I, I just wanted to, to start to move into something else, which is why I came to LA and started pursuing the writing, acting and directing side, which I hadn't done at all. Most of my life was just as a dancer. So that's kind of a very, very sort of um, condensed version of, of how I got here. Um, but Europe was was amazing. I mean, I, I loved working in Europe and I loved the shows that I did there and the different mm-hmm. jobs that I did. I, I really did enjoy working and living in Europe. But I do feel like L.A. or the United States, I guess, does offer you a little bit more opportunity, if I'm honest, especially right. for people wanting to come here and move more into a field that they maybe don't have the most experience in. Like, for example, with like directing for me, if I said to someone in Europe, like, oh, I want to be a director, they're instantly going to say, okay, well, you got to go to school. You've got to do this, that, and the other, and you got to work your way up the mm-hmm. ladder and stuff. Whereas here, I think if you've got a good original idea and you have a good vision, um, you do need to prove yourself, of course, by maybe doing a couple of shorts. But people will take you a little more seriously. And I do think that's a nice thing about the United States. It's, there's maybe lacking a little bit in Europe. That's fascinating. I didn't I didn't really think about that. Is there, like, what's the film industry like over there? Yeah, the film industry is definitely booming over there. And they've got a lot of yeah. great, they, 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 they make, especially like London, they, they make amazing content and like really good films. It's just like, it's just hard to break through there, right? Like, it, it, I actually, for my feature film, I had a, a meeting today with a production production company in Scotland who, who mm-hmm. were lovely and so good, and hopefully they're going to come on board, which is fantastic. But even they, very kindly, and not in a bad way, but threw caution to the wind for me, kind of saying, because it would be your first time being a first-time director as a feature, you know, they were like, in Scotland, that's hard. It's hard to get people just to to 
trust you in a way, which I understand. It's like, you know, who's going to throw you millions of dollars even here, right? That's right. tough, right? It's not like yeah. it's easy here, right? It's it's tough here as well. But I feel like in Europe, it's just that little bit, a little bit harder. And here, for example, my friend Gerald, um, who was actually the director of that film, Film Claw, um, who, he did a really good job and a fun, a fun sort of job. It's like a horror film about... Um, dinosaurs that run around and attack us, which is really fun to film. But um, he he did one film before this, um, and he got the whole of that film funded. Now I don't know if that would have happened in in London at least. Like I think you really need to establish yourself in many ways before someone's going to be like, okay, here's a few hundred, like you know, thousand or, or millions, or you know, before that happens, you've really got to lay the groundwork a lot. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah. whereas here, I just think that there's a little more opportunity. Where I've had I've had some meetings about funding for my film, um, and people have taken me really seriously about that, you know. And we've got some really cool people that have come on board, like a really good casting director and things that that have taken me a little more seriously, even though I haven't actually directed a feature before, just two short films. Yeah, well, no, that's really motivating. I think to hear from a, like a perspective of a writer and directors and all of that. Did you write it here or did you would did you start writing it when you were in Europe? I wrote it. I started the very, very first draft. I was I was having to leave L.A. because of a visa situation. And I wrote it on the plane from L.A. to London, like was the very first draft. But that was like two years ago. I mean, it took me over two years, actually, to get it to this point where I'm actually starting to have meetings with production companies. It took me a long time to get here just because the script wasn't ready. And it's the first feature I wrote as well. So it took me a long time to get it. I worked with a script consultant as well that was really helpful and she was fantastic. So it took me a long time to get it to this place. But um, originally I started writing it on the way from LA to to London. Um, And that was when I was getting kicked out of the country (laughs) because of visa situation. Well, the one bad thing about coming here from Europe, and it's okay. something that has been a bane of my life, but, you know, it's kind of over now because I think I just got my green card, which is really cool. Yay, but you have to have, thank you, thank you so much. But you do have to have visas to come here. And I'll, I'm not going to lie, it's it's kind of hard. It's definitely doable. Like, I do think I would definitely persuade people to do it. I think it's it's great once you're here and it's and it's definitely achievable, but it's achievable with a lot of hard work. And even, mm-hmm. oh, goodness, why did I, I, my first visa ran out, but my green card had already been approved, but USCIS had put a delay on my case because of administrative errors. So because of that, I had to leave the country, even though it wasn't like my fault. And I had to leave the country and get another visa to come back with because the visas only last for three years. So there's a lot of sort of stuff that goes around like that, which, and it's a lot of money. I mean, every time you get a visa, you're speaking like, uh, between six and eight thousand yeah. dollars probably yeah. and six thousand dollars is on the cheap side i mean today it might even go up closer to ten thousand to be honest um and i had a friend that did it for me so i was very lucky and i you know had it on the cheap but it is expensive yeah. and then and then with the green card ones even more i think the green card one cost me about twelve thousand so altogether i probably spent like twenty five thousand on visas and and green cards to yeah. get me to this position yeah, so wow. that's a huge undertaking. It's a frustrating and long process. Yeah. I'm so happy that you're, you're yeah, here Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I'm, ve- I'm very happy. And that's the thing about, like, I, I know that the, the United States are going through some tough times. Like, everyone is in the world right now with COVID, right? Mm-hmm. But I do like to think that, like, I, I think it's a, it's a great country that offers so much opportunity. And from someone that came from Europe, where it just does feel a bit more like a closed shop there you know you've got to stay in your in your lane like if you're a dancer you're you're a dancer and I think it's quite hard to become a choreographer there whereas here a lot Mm -hmm. of my friends who are dancers get opportunities to choreograph something you know through a and it might even start as something small just through a friend like oh can you go and choreograph this music video but there's just that opportunity here which I just don't think is so much in Europe so it's worth it. Were you planning on um, filming the majority of your film um abroad yeah definitely so i mean the film is 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 a is um set in a small town in scotland well a small area in scotland called fife which was a mining community back in 1984 when all the mines were shut down and that's kind of the the setting of what my film is is in so honestly i need to shoot it in in scotland just because 
I'm so not, I'm not going to lie. It's not to interrupt, but um, when you do shoot that, I'm going to have to come visit you on set oh, because yeah. Scotland is my number one choice for like, I, I'm dying to go it's visit her there. Dream. It's her dream. Oh, please. Well, you know, the thing is as well about Scottish people is like they're very, very um, accommodating and very friendly, I think. I mean, when I go home, I'm always shocked at how friendly people are and like you know everyone would open you with with open arms you know it would be a nice little holiday for you I think I I, I really do love Scotland and I love I love the culture there I love the people everyone's you know always in the pub you know like in Britain there's like that real like pub culture where everyone yeah. just goes to the pub but it's very nice it kind of sets sets this tone of community um, more fans of that pub culture yeah exactly. <laughs> everyone's fans of the pub culture <laughs> Um, but I do think that that's maybe one thing that I miss, if I'm honest, uh, is, is, and that, that's also in Paris. I felt the same in Paris and London too, you know, there, there, um, is a little bit more of a sense of community, um, there, not that like people, um, are there for each other here. I just think, and I, again, I think I'm speaking about LA because, do you know what I find hard about LA actually is, is I feel like there's no spontaneity here, right? So when I was in Paris, I felt like my friend would call me and be like, oh, where are you? And because it's so much smaller, I'd be like, oh, I'm just around the corner from there. Let's just meet up in this cafe and go get a wine, right? Whereas here in LA, I think it's just because of the, the vast space that's here, right? Like I'll call my friend and be like, oh, where are you? He's like, oh, I'm in Malibu. Oh, well, I'm in like West Hollywood. Okay, so I'll be there in like three hours. Okay, you know, <laughs> and it's like, there's just none of that sort of, fun spontaneity feeling spontaneous feeling sorry um so you know I feel like um that's something that I miss and I think that brings a little bit more of a sense of community and the fact that in these like in this I, I grew up in Aberdeen in Scotland it's quite a small town and yeah on a, on a Saturday night everyone would go out to the pub and you would know everyone in that pub because it's a small town you know or the majority yeah. of the people there whereas I mean how often does that happen in LA like never I like never see people I know in LA out. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, exactly. And even like a bigger city, like is like Paris or London, which is a big city with a lot of people in it. And um, even when I went out there, I would still know loads of people. I would meet loads of people when I'm out on the, you know, on a night out. And here in LA, I mean, it never happens. I would love to like run into you guys I on know. a night out. It would be fun. It would be lovely. <laughs> Yeah. It just never happened. <laughs> no, no, unless I like plan to go out with that person, that's who I'm seeing that night. I never like run into anyone. It's nuts. Yeah, to think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you said your film takes place in that small um, town in Scotland. Are you willing to share anything about the plot? Yeah, so it's it's a it, it's it's something I can't probably speak too much about, and I feel really That's awful okay. about that. Whatever I'm so sorry. Whatever you want to share. It's only just because literally today, um, this production company kind of loosely came on board. As in, he's he's actually given us a few things to write about, but they're going to be sending it to film for and BBC BBC Scotland, which is exciting. Um, to hopefully, exciting. Tr- which is great, which would hopefully get like a development program through them um so because of that i just feel like i need to kind of keep it under the wraps a little bit but let's do it again in like a month or something when things are a little bit more secured and then 100 percent, i would love to to tell you guys all about it so but what i can say what sorry we can't wait then yes yeah I mean, well, I can say it's set in 1984 in a small town in Scotland, and it and it will have that. Um, it, it, it the whole like kind of theme and the story is actually about community and kind of finding home. Home is where the heart is. Type of story, you know. It's about it's about a man that is finding and um, who's moved away from his community at a very very young age and is finding home and love for the community that he once ran away from. So it's it it, it, it sort of bases around that community of what I just spoke about about the feeling of everyone being there for each other no matter what. And um, and and finding family within your community. That's beautiful. Yeah. Ah, thanks. That's Thank great. you. I also love that it's set in the eighties. That's so. That's going to be. Yeah, so- I mean, the, yeah, the eighties was such an interesting time and and such a such a rich part of British history, a sad part of British history because yeah. of everything that happened with Margaret Thatcher. But you yeah. know, at the same time, it was it was it was very rich in 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 history. Um, have you guys been to Europe before? I've never been. Pam has. I spent some time. um, I did a summer program in Oxford, um, like about, oh oh my God, oh my God, it's going to be 10 years ago now. That's crazy. And I got to spend a little bit of time in London. Nice. In Oxford. That's fancy. Yeah. 
You're it like was, my it beautiful. Was <laughs> no, no. It was honestly, it was um it had that vibe to it as well. Like you would see people on their bicycles with the books in their baskets and people meeting at the pub on the corner. Like after class, everyone would just like meet at the same place and go for walks together. And it was like the loveliest experience. So I got a little bit of taste of what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It is really nice that like, I I do love it. And you know, on a summer, like when, when we were in Paris, like in the summers, we would all go and sit on the sand, which is like the big river that runs between it, the, it through Paris. Sorry. And that, and that sort of stuff I do miss, you know, like, and we, had, I was very close with a lot of people in the cast at the Moulin Rouge. So we would have, we would kind of go and, and do that a lot. And I, I kind of miss those days in the, in the summer, although it gets so hot in the summer in Paris and there's no AC. So that's kind of hell. You know, no one has AC there. So it's How like, hot does it get? Like, like here hot? Oh, on or certain hot? days here hot. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it wouldn't be all day, all year round. It's only like a few days of the year, but those days are awful. Those days are really, really horrible. Um, but um, and then it gets really cold, right? Like in the in yeah. the winter, it's kind of you, you definitely get the seasons, which I like actually. I kind of miss that too in a way. Like I, I love LA, and I can't complain about the weather here. I mean, it's amazing. But it's also nice to have that the, the seasons, right? To have like the winter mm-hmm. and, and I know, spring I, I, and summer. Yeah, being from the East Coast, I miss I miss having fall a lot. I really love the fall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you have you been to Paris before, Alexa? No, I've never been to Europe, Richard. I'm like so sheltered. I need to get out. Oh, we need to take you. We need to go. I know we need to go because I know I would just adore it. But obviously we're not allowed right now. So. Oh, I know. Well, yeah, that's a thing. And I don't even think, well, actually, I think that, that because I just got my green card, if yeah. I left, I would actually be allowed to come back in, which is good. Okay. But most people, yeah, you're not even allowed in here or or Americans, I guess, aren't allowed in Europe. It's yeah. a very strange time, what's happening. It's like it really weird. It is very that's strange. Going on. How have you been coping with the whole quarantine thing? I know you were writing a lot, but what yeah. is it like for you with that? To be honest, I've, I've, oh, it sounds horrible. Like I don't, uh, but I kind of loved it. Like I haven't been, I haven't, I've been one of those people that haven't like hated it, to be honest. In, mm-hmm. I was, I think I've tried to be as positive as I can about it. And of course, I'm worried about, about, um, the situation. I hope everyone's staying safe. And I think that that's something that's, that's the main importance of the, of the pandemic. However, mm-hmm. I've used the time to be as productive as I could, you know, in ways of just writing. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it was actually the time that we really developed the script the strongest. Like me yeah. and my writing partner kind of quarantined together. And he was back at his place and he would come over. He's the only person I would see. Um, and he'd come over and we would write for like, you know, six to eight hours a day for mm-hmm. for most of the quarantine. We kind of did that. And then yeah. and, and it really developed the script. So in a way it was like, oh, well, this is kind of a nice little break and and to just to just really delve into stuff that that I wanted to get finished Mm -hmm. I remember you saying something about how you were like well I'm going to take this time as like you know treat myself like I'm a professional writer you said something like that yeah I thought that was so smart of a like a mindset to have I really loved that I forget yeah, what your exact words were, but they were very wise. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was just kind of the idea that um, that you know I had all this time and I wasn't doing it. Then there was there was other time when I was working on different films and, and other people's projects, which is yeah. well, even Chicago the musical, like, which we <laughs> did together, you know. And it's great to work on those projects, but they um, they take up so much of your time. Like, how much were we doing with Chicago? Like, you know, six six days a, re- a week of rehearsals. Yeah, and then, that was the, yes. that was a time commitment for sure. Yeah. So then you can't really work on it, right? Like, as in what you could do, like two hours a night, maybe if you really put yourself to it. But I did, I decided to put the mindset of just being like, well, this is my time that I'm not, I mean, I'm not paid yet to be a professional writer. But because I have this time, what's my excuse? I'm going to treat myself like a professional writer and make sure that I have to get this developed by this certain day. And I will write for eight hours every single day, take a break for lunch, you know, that that sort of and try to structure my day around, around that. Yeah, I love that. So you it takes such discipline to do that, especially during this time. Right. But then awesome. there's other stuff that I'd be really bad with, like my body. Like I have not done the gym at all. Like I've eaten whatever I want. Been joining joining the, the club. Exactly. Right but like, <laughs> oh, you know, but it's like this funny thing because I feel like there's like one way or the other, right? Like some people are going to come out of this pandemic looking like Hulk Hogan. 
and like just like looking like amazing you know and then other people are gonna like waddle out like me like I was just gonna like waddle out in my apartment I remember during Chicago you were on this strict diet of like what was that he was like eating this soup it was oh, like that's I, don't, awful. I don't even know what it was and I was you ate it every day and I was like wow like this man has discipline like I don't know how <laughs> he is doing this I don't even know what was in that what was in that do you know what? It's actually incredibly unhealthy. Like, if anyone anyone that is listening, don't do this because okay, it's bad. But, but no, it's it's fine. I mean, it, but it's um, it's basically like a broth thing, and it just cuts me up. So, like, I do it for like three weeks before a show, and it's basically like chicken and vegetables like mushed up into like a watery brush it's, it's actually it sounds disgusting but you put loads of like oxo cubes in it you know what that is like it's like um stock i guess oh, in, like a bullion chicken cube yeah stock. like a chicken cube yeah like a stock okay. I, in britain they're called oxo cubes oh. um but you put them in there that gives it like a lot of like that sort of flavor with like that sort of salty flavors it doesn't taste so awful but by the time you get past week one it's like oh my god like i can't have this much longer and yeah I did that only because Chicago is like such like a topless show right like as in it's like yeah. it's very revealing like all the costumes are like really you- cut to your body and yeah. see-through like you know and I remember my costume fitting I wasn't quite in my shape that I wanted to be and I remember looking at myself and mesh like oh so I was like I'm going on the broth diet so I'll just do that again when I come out of quarantine. You looked fabulous Richard it was great don't even thank worry. you thank you <laughs> I was definitely one of those people at the beginning of quarantine that was like, I'm going to come out of this buffer than I have ever been in my life. And then I don't know what happened, like maybe week three or week four, it's like a struggle to even take like the online class. It's like a roller coaster (laughs) of really on it and then, oh, not on it at all. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You have days where I'm like, oh, I'm the healthiest person in the world. And then like the next day I'm eating like, I don't know a burger and fries from in and out it's fine right I think the thing is though, yeah. yeah I think the thing is though like it's it's like do whatever you needed to do in this pandemic as in right. whatever was good for you and what was good for your soul right I don't think there mm-hmm. should be judgment if you literally just sit down and watch tv every single day how many times in our in the world I how many days within the, within your life were you able to do that really you know and if that's right. what that helped you to just sort of reset from your busy life, you know, and it was just watching TV all the time. And I think good, you know, like just whatever helped each individual person get through it. And now yeah. we're doing a second one. So we can maybe get we're into doing a second. <laughs> Round two quarantine. Here we go. Here we come for round two. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, write another script or, you know, it's like crazy. What do we do? Do you have other ideas in your brain, Richard, to like, for right? Do you have, do you always like think of new stuff? I know you're like very, um, very committed to what you're doing right now, but I'm just curious, like how a writer's brain. Yeah, writing. I do. I do have some different, different ideas that are kind of like racked around my brain, but um, it's hard to, um, for me, it's hard to develop them when I've still got my head so right. far into this one. You know, I like to kind of do it one at a time. I think there's other people that can do a load of projects all at the same time, you know, and I think that's great. That's a fantastic skill mm. to have. And hopefully one day I will be able to develop that skill myself. But for me, I find that really tough. Do you, you know, write, I like, do you write your ideas, ideas down as they come to you or no? Kind of. And then I try to put them into a log line. Like, oh. so the first thing I try to do is like put it into a log line just so that I, I can kind of have it there on paper um and then like I've got a few writing partners that I write certain stuff with like I have one that I wrote like one short film that we shot another one that I wrote another short film this one who's fantastic a guy called Juan and he's lovely and very very good um his name is Juan Carlos Sanchez actually cool name to give, him, to give him yeah it is a cool name and, and he's been great with like but I that's the other thing I love a writing partner like I, do, mm-hmm. I don't like to have all the responsibility myself. Like I like to like bounce ideas off of someone. And I think it just makes a richer story and, and develops character. Like he's, he's better with dialogue than I am, you know, for example. So he kind of helps me around with that. Sometimes I think I can be a little on the nose with my writing or with, when it comes to dialogue. So he mm-hmm. kind of manages to help me with that. And I think it's great to, to do, to do um, have a writing partner. So what I'm saying is that the log lines, sorry, going back to that. So the log lines that I would write down, I would send to different people that I, that I would want to work with them about and then bounce the idea a little bit further from that to develop it into a bigger idea. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
I think it must be cool to have um I, I've had a couple writing partners in the past and what I found is like the triumphs are sweeter because you get to share them and the failures are less um terrible because you get to share them absolutely that's a great that's actually really cool to think of it like that I that's a very 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 true comment that I didn't even think of but you're because today for example we did celebrate we were like we had that zoom zoom call this morning um with that production company and it was a celebration and it does feel great and then obviously like last week we had um you know the opposite where someone didn't want to come on board with the with the script which will happen so many times you know it's just part and parcel of the industry and you're right and it was kind of a situation where i was quite down about it and my writing partner was like oh well, i mean it'll happen it's fine let's just move on you know like as in don't worry about it and it is true to have that person there to share your successes with but also to share the the small falls with as well yeah, yeah. i totally agree yeah. that's why so i have pam so why pam has me with the podcast. Yeah, that's sweet. I love it. You guys are like your little partners. It's sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have someone to share it with. I love that. That's such a nice sentiment too. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I love that saying. Mm-hmm. For sure. I want to hear, do you guys have any Alaska stories from your experience with uh, Chicago? Oh, <laughs> oh no. There are faces for our listeners that aren't able to see us because oh yeah they're that's filming true. this oh, yeah, they their do. faces just froze in terror <laughs> both of them. um we had a lot of fun we uh, did have a lot of fun we did we had a lot of fun it was a lot of hard work and a very it was a, it was a pretty grueling process i will just put that out there um it you know was. putting a show up in you know i mean how many weeks of rehearsal do we have like two weeks and then we like two and a half yeah it was it wasn't much at all yeah, two and a half weeks and then fly to Alaska and tech the show and then put it up. Yeah, it was very, yeah. Yeah, it, it was tough. But the, the good thing was the cast were really quiet. I did love the cast. Like, they yeah. were really nice and that kind of got, like, I always think the cast gets you through a show. Like, Absolutely. I've done other shows, which I won't mention, where the cast have just been, like, not the best. And that that makes such a difference. And you've got, like, a good cast and good people, even if you're, served a complete shit show you're able to to make it into something like nice and fun yeah. you know and not yeah. that Chicago was a shit show at all actually it was it was it was a good show which was fun but um the cast were were great I the really cast, liked them the cast was fabulous um so happy I to forget be- though so quick like I forget about stuff like I'm like what happened yeah. like it was such a whirlwind as well I'm trying to think of an actual story I mean, I remember you uh, pretending to be Mr. Bean in your costume. That was really a highlight for Oh, me. yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember. Here's what I remember. What was your character? Oh, the hun- character the Hunyak. The Hunyak, that's it. And there was a moment where, like, if you know Chicago the Musical, there's, oh. like, a big bandstand, and then there's chairs that are kind of all the way up this side of the bandstand. And, um, you know, the ensemble sit on the chairs throughout the whole show and they kind of do that to represent the idea of like a court you know and people waiting to go in because the whole the whole show is a trial effectively is what Chicago's based around um and anyway Alexa's sitting there as Hunya Richard's and, gonna throw and, me under the bus let's I'm just uh, prefacing this with please I please throw her under the bus I'm just gonna preface this which I with I didn't totally miss my entrance the audience did not know but the cast <laughs> definitely knew that I did. Yeah, she made it just in time, but she flew across that stage to that spotlight. So she's sitting on this chair, just oh. sort of like in, in her own little world. And then Mama Morton, she calls you, right? Doesn't she say like, Hunyak? She says Hunyak. And, and, and a and spotlight, comes on. Yeah, a spotlight comes on. Yeah, a spotlight comes on. But this time I, I'd walked into my spotlight. Oh, she did. She strutted into the spotlight. You did well, actually. You covered it well. But I remember just, I was sitting opposite her on the other side of the stage on the other chair. And I was like, I was trying so hard not to laugh. Like, that's the best part for me is when you're on stage and you've got to like, I I am the worst for that. Like, if someone messes up, I just cry with laughter. And it's so bad. It's so unprofessional. It's like people would probably notice from me laughing more than anything. I mean, how unprofessional is that? But I just cannot help myself. Like, I obviously hold it in a bit. 
yeah. but like tears were like rolling down my face. I think it's the funniest thing when people mess up. I don't know why. I'm like a, I'm like so, a child. Sitting in those chairs was the hardest thing. Like to stay in like in the scene but not be in the scene was so difficult because it's not like being backstage where you're really engaged because you're like have, you're like a prop. Right. So it was really difficult. It was really difficult, and um, I was like thinking about a different part of the show. And then meanwhile. Right. And I remember in rehearsals as well, you know, in rehearsals, they started placing you in different chairs throughout the Mm -hmm. thing. And every time they were placing you in a chair, I would like go to the bathroom because I'm like, he has not put me in a chair because I did the show before, like a long time ago, I did the show and I knew about these chairs and I was like, I'm not going to be sitting in this chair. For the whole time. So every time you go, oh, we need some people on the side, I would just like slide into like the bathroom <laughs> or like slide into the costume room or like slide into the break room. I would just be like, I'm not. So in the end, I think you were on the chairs all the time. I like, was always on the chairs. Yeah. See, next time she does the show, she'll know. You slide into the bathroom when they're casting people for the chairs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> Good times, good times. It's nice yeah. to reminisce about it. And obviously it was one of the last, you know, live performances I did in 2020. Yeah, and I remember actually speaking about it in rehearsals to um, Chad, and um, one of the dancers, and then our, our director, Andy. I was chatting to them about it in a break. Um, and I remember it's how ridiculous, but we were like, this is nothing. Like, COVID will be nothing. It, it, like, it, you know, and then now look at us. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think, yeah, we just made it in time to be honest. Because when did we come back from doing that show? Like beginning of March. Yeah, and then and then what? Fifteenth of March we were shut down. I know. I when we got back from Chicago, I think I worked. I went back to my side hustle for two weeks. And then yeah, we were, and then that was it. And that was so it. actually it was a very nice way to start start the year because I don't know about you guys, but definitely me. Like all my jobs have just dried up. I had other stuff that was planned to come that I was going to be filming. Mm-hmm. All of them got cancelled. All of them have been just put on hold, you know. Um, the only thing that I've shot since the lock- that lockdown is this one day of claw yeah. of that film, you know. That's it, like one day of it. So it's a little bit like, oh, like I'm glad that we got that in, in a way. So that I had at least two months of performing before in the year, you know, because I don't know when we're going to go back. It's a bit scary. I know. It is a bit scary. I know. We got it in in the nick of time. Yeah. And certain things like all my friends that still dance at the Mulan, they're they're all shut down and it looks like they're going to be shut down until at least January. Like all the cabarets in Paris, the West End shows like Hamilton and all that, they're shut down, I think, till the end of January 2021. It's kind of crazy. So I'm glad that we managed to do Chicago for a couple of months. Yeah, it was a very sweet. It's it's a very nice memory now to have. And I'm really glad we got to do it. Plus, I mean, that was a that was definitely a bucket list show for me. So I'm glad I got it in. Yeah, and you were great in that show. You were very, very Thank good. You. Thank you. You were very, very castable for that show. <laughs> you were fabulous as well in your costume. Oh, thank you. Finally, with three weeks of broth, <laughs> I better be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Richard! Well, it's been. It's. Um, I think we're getting to our segment of. Are you okay? Are you ready? Do you want to no. go first, or do you want to? Do you want to have an example? I'll go at the. End. I'll. I'll go in the end. I want an example. Okay, I'm gonna ask. Okay. Sam. All right. Okay. Are you ready? I mean, no, but I'll come up okay. with something. Pamela, <laughs> are you okay? No. <laughs> She's not. <laughs> I'm not okay. Tell us why. Um, May- I wonder what it is. Oh, no. We're not going to get into not that. Okay? I'm joking. I was talking about um, that. <laughs> um, I'm not okay. I It's been a tough couple weeks. Not going to lie, lots of anxiety, especially now that this stuff is ramping up again. And my productivity has gone down quite a bit. But I did notice, like, yesterday and today, I've, like, started to pull it back up. So I'm hopeful that I can continue on that trajectory. But let me throw in some good news, because now every time I say I'm not okay, like, I feel the need to say something positive. So let's yeah. let's think for, for one second. Um, something <laughs> positive. That. Um, recording always makes me feel better, and it's even better when we have such a lovely guest. Oh, thanks, guys. That's so sweet. And, you know, in, the, in terms of, like, I understand, like, it, the productivity and how you would feel down about that. But I all like, kind of going back to what I said before about not judging yourself. Like, it comes in waves, right? Yeah. And I think that if you're in that point where you're just 
not feeling as productive as as you have before that's okay it's part of like the process right like those down moments um are just giving you time to think and process and do what you need to do to make yourself feel better so that when you do have that up, upper wave of when you're feeling productive again you're going to be more productive you can't just constantly be on this wave of being productive the oh, whole time that's like one thing that i've the, the one thing that i have tried to like really hammer in with myself is to be gentle with myself during this time but mm-hmm. i have noticed a pattern with myself that when i'm very productive and working hard i will work myself until i get sick and right. then it's like too much like i i have a very hard time finding the middle ground when i'm working i work hard enough to like where i like break down my body like can't do it anymore and then i'll do nothing for too long mm. there's no even ground Right, right, absolutely. So I need to learn. So that. enjoy the time when you're not when you're not doing so much. You know, like enjoy yeah. it and don't don't judge yourself for it. You obviously work really hard when you are up. You know, yeah. we're we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. Alexa, <laughs> yes. Are you okay? Um, I am. I'm. Do, am I allowed to say I'm doing well? Is that better than okay or, or worse than okay? I think it's like I a little it's the bit same better. As okay. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Thank you, Richard. I'm always the one calling her out. I swear I think someone we, me. we have this conversation every week because I'm really bad at like identifying where I'm at. Okay. Um, I think because I, I have like I my pendulum swings like so quickly. So I want to say I'm doing better than okay because Shane, my boyfriend, who's moving across the country currently, lol, uh, is going mm. to be here in an hour. Oh, you should be like doing much better than okay. So yeah, no, why? Yes, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm I very hope happy. he doesn't listen to this and hear that you said that you're doing well. <laughs> well she lied, I, Shan. It's, she's like, actually tap dancing from excitement. I am, I am tap dancing exactly. from excitement, but also like I'm nervous too because I'm like, oh, he's like actually here. Like I've got, like I weirdly had like anxiety all day because I'm worried he's gonna like not like it here i don't know why i'm stressed about that it's dumb oh he'll love it he'll love I know. it he's worry. been here before i know he's I making know. an informed choice it's I just a worry huge move you know for another human being i'm like oh god i hope he i hope he likes me that much but that's an amazing thing that he's making that movie he must like you that much yeah. if he's made the move yeah yeah exactly it's i think happening. he i think he more than likes you and i think he's thanks, making Pam. an informed choice thanks Pam. exactly <laughs> very very true very true yeah so and that you're was- doing well about it <laughs> just a little better than okay i'm doing exactly you know what? i'm doing fantastic there is that word better Good. for you okay let's okay. log back in when he arrives and ask him how he's doing <laughs> yes <laughs> all right okay richard mm-hmm. are you okay i'm great Yes. I feel, I've had yes. a very good day, so I feel oh, very, very good Yes, about it. you have had yeah. a great day, yes. Yeah, I feel very lucky with, with the kind of the conversation. I had a very, that very, very long Zoom conversation this morning, and it ended up being a very, very productive and um, positive outcome. So that's, okay. that's exciting. We've got to do rewrites, which I don't, I don't hate. I enjoy it. And it's, it, he gave very, very good notes for the script. So we're going to do some rewrites over the, probably the next like, month and then hopefully send it out to these pretty big British companies to try to get it developed and eventually funded and made so it's a it's kind of the right step in the right direction so I, I'm great after today I had a very very good day Richard I'm That's so fantastic. excited for you I'm so thank excited you for you honestly it's gonna be congratulations yeah, congrats thank you so much thank you I really appreciate it and before we log off I want to um, ask Richard where can our listeners follow you um, so I have, Inst- I'm, not, I'm not so good with like Instagram and stuff. I do have an Instagram. It's Richard Rennie. So my last name is R-E-N-N-I-E. Um, but I don't have loads of followers. And to be honest, I've got to post more. Like I don't, I don't follow that, that, that good. Um, and then, um, I mean, I guess, I think Claw, their film will be released. I mean, they're, they're literally, they're, I think they're doing, um, final picture lock on Saturday, actually, the end of this week. So that means they're going to send it to the sound department and then um, composers. So they're looking at sort of distribution beginning of next year. And it's a horror film that will be um, distributed on online platforms. So look out for that. So that'll be fun to, to, to be a part of that. will be my newest, my newest film coming out. So that'll be cool. Very exciting. Yeah, I love horror yeah. films. So. 
Yeah, I mean, this one's campy and fun. Like, it's like, yeah. it's, it's quite campy and it knows what it is, which is good. It's kind of like a camp version of Jurassic Park, you know? It's like we're running away from a <laughs> velociraptor the whole film, you know? Love so it's, but it's, it, it's done in a very funny sort of almost comedic way, which I, which I really liked. So it was a fun, it was a fun film in actually. It was a good, a good thing to film. Yeah, that's perfect for I you. Normally, I can totally see you in that. I don't yeah, normally do horror, fun. but I'll be sure to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and it's, like I said, I don't think it's actually super f- scary, this one. It's not, like, massive. Like, there are certain parts that, that are a little bit gory, but more, like, comedy and campy sort of fun film, you know? Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much, guys, for having me on. It's been a pleasure. It's been so fun. Aww, thank, thank you for you joining for us. Time. We're so happy you did. Yeah, this Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the things. If for some reason you want to see more of us, you can follow us on Instagram at no one's okay. And a special thanks to Jordan Ross Weinhold, Sean Moore, Jason Crow, Claire Palmer, Jackson Palmer, Tiffany Hamoff, Shane Rings, James Liddell, and our podcast is recorded at Soundworks Studios. We, we can't, can't wait, wait to meet you! you.